the president after and, you know, it seems like ages ago, but it was really only a week or so ago after basically calling the EU a foe, um, slamming NATO, uh, went to meet with Vladimir Putin, in which was a summit, then downgraded to a meeting and then back to summit with no discernible agenda at the beginning. Right. I mean, he was asked point blank, what is your agenda uh, by CBS News? And he said, I'll tell you after the meeting, the White House wasn't putting out this sort of traditional like we're going to talk about this topic, this topic, that topic. This topic may come up or this topic we're not going to discuss. Um, no benchmarks as to what was to be achieved by this summit. There's plenty of things to talk about with Russia in particular. Um the you know how we uh, deal with uh, a lot of their old nukes and et cetera et cetera but none of it there was none of it and then they came out for the now famous press conference um uh and and i guess we should backtrack and and remind people and it seems like ages ago that the Mueller investigation had indicted uh a, a dozen russian military intelligence people in their uh, efforts to meddle in the presidential election. And with that, Donald Trump was was questioned with it and basically said, I know my intelligence people have said it, but, you know, Putin said he didn't. So what are you going to do? I mean, why would they do it? I mean, it was uh, well, just I know you've written about it. Uh, you know, it, w- w- give me your your reactions. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was surreal, I mean, to, to say the least. I mean, I think we all, you know, we saw that he was behaving erratically at the at the NATO summit, right? I mean, something seemed to me to be wrong, and and not in the sense that I had seen previously in which Trump has been kind of feeling his oats and testing the limits of his power. I mean, that was yes. present in this, but there was a franticness about this that I haven't seen before. You know, kind of a, there was just a different energy about it at the NATO summit when he was just he being very kind of, you know, weirdly confrontational, you know, in more than what we'd seen before. And then he went to England and gave that crazy interview uh, to the Murdoch tabloid, The Sun, in which he said a lot of stuff that even for Trump was ridiculous. I mean, being very, very, you know, uh, hostile toward Theresa May, the prime minister, and talking about Brexit in a way that was just very, very, and very condescending toward May, saying that, you know, I offered her the right advice and she wouldn't take it. And, you know, it was just, it was a really, really bad interview going into a high level meeting with a, with a foreign leader. And, and, and in fact, the reporter that get it, to whom he gave that interview, said later, he said, you know, it was very strange. It was kind of like dealing with a medieval king. He would not listen to anybody. His his people were trying to stop him, I think. <laughs> I don't know if it was Sarah Sanders or the new guy, Bill Shine, or whatever. Somebody apparently was stepping in and kind of going, hey, you know, you got to go. Usually a signal to put an end to, the, to it. And he wouldn't listen. He just kept going. So it was very strange. And that, even for him, that was a little bit much. And then, of course, his performance at the press conference with Theresa May was almost unintelligible. I mean, it was very, very, uh, I mean, erratic isn't the word for it. It was it was kind of incoherent. And there were times when even he sounded like he was slurring a little bit. He didn't read very well. It was it was a very, very poor performance on his part. And some of that may have just Can been me- his own embarrassment in having to face May after doing that uh, when right. he did with the interview. So the Putin thing, I think... I was kind of, I knew something weird was going to happen because the whole trip was like that. But I don't think, even with all that, I didn't expect that he would do what he did, which was basically come out and say, hey, you know, yeah, yeah, we arrested 12 guys last Friday, but it's, I'm not sure I believe that uh, they did anything. And basically, my guy says one thing, Putin says another, who might have believed? You know, it's a toss up. You know, they both have make good points, and I think I've never I've never seen anything stun people quite as much as that one. Even from Trump, even the Access Hollywood or Charlottesville, or all these moments that we've all thought were turning points, and then turned out not to be. This one seems to hit more more deeply because at some point I think even Republicans, although we can talk about that too, because right. I have no faith in them. But for the moment. 
I think it kind of sho- it, it it sent a shockwave through them that maybe this guy really was selling out the country. Maybe it's more than just him being a racist and a you know a xenophobe and an incompetent and you know maybe it's more than him just putting on this awful show. Maybe it's real. You know, maybe deep down something really, really serious is happening. They don't care about that other stuff. In fact, they encourage it. This was something different. So, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I don't have any faith that they'll do anything with it. But I do agree with you that this was, I don't know if it's a turning point, but it was a different moment than anything we've experienced up to this point with Trump. Yeah, and, and we should say, I mean, even before we get to the press conference, the idea of going into this meeting without the agenda and without any formal record, without any advisors, um, two hours of yeah, private I mean, conversation is is um, you know at best, right? At best, shockingly anti-democratic. Right? Yeah. I mean, to to have this type of uh, um, opaqueness is 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 stunning and. That's the best case scenario, which would be outrageous if we hadn't all been trained to um, to have our, uh, you know, our, our expectations dropped. And I should say that uh, Gene Shaheen uh, from New Hampshire has uh, told Bob Corker that, um, you know, uh, who, who runs, uh, I believe it's the uh, government oversight um, uh, committee in the Senate. Mm hmm. You got to bring in the interpreter because that was the only person in the room and they want this person in a hearing to find out what was discussed in the room. And even, you know, I could see this happening even if there wasn't these suspicions and this strange behavior around Trump. I mean, you know, theoretically, we're in a democracy and theoretically, we should have at least an awareness as to what the head of our uh, state is uh, attempting to achieve by negotiating with with other you know with other heads of states i mean this seems to me to be a very reasonable request and uh it's it's not been satisfied all right well listen we got to take a break when we come back let's talk more about the the fallout from that press conference there's both the reaction from Republican senators, there's reaction from the American public, and then after about 24 hours or so, there was reaction from Donald Trump where he, he had the opportunity to review the, tra- the tape and the transcript and to amend it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. I'm Sam Cedar, Ring of Fire Radio. Be right back.